Hey guys, welcome to another Shoot and Review. My name is Trevor16 Shooter. Today we are taking a look at Hot Toys TMS 021 Sokotano from the Clone Wars. Uh, this is their take on the animated Ahsoka from the later years in the Clone Wars. We're going to take it out of the box. We're going to show you everything she comes with, walk you through a little bit of the articulation and some of the accessories. Get her on the table, take a shot with her, walk you through that, and then I'm going to give you my score, what I think about it. Let's get going. All right, let's uh, get the box open and see what she's got inside. Uh, the box itself is a pretty standard Star Wars box. It's got the uh, art band around the side of it and the front that uh, they've been doing lately and all your legal information on the back there. Uh, opening up the top, you've got the art card. Nice shot there. And then inside is a single tray with a little insert in there, which we'll... Uh, Take a look at it in a second when I get this open. Uh, this comes with, this holds the lightsabers and the uh, lightsaber swinging effects and the hands. In the main tray, we've got the cloak, uh, three holograms, uh, the hologram projector, the handheld projector, thermal detonator. Uh, we've got the uh, PERS controller, the figure, and underneath there is the stand. So uh, it's got that new hot toy smell. Hmm. So let's get her out of the box and take a look at everything she comes with. All right, before we take a quick look at the accessories, let's take a look at Ahsoka herself. I really like the sculpt. I think they did a great job of kind of bringing the animated character into the real world. I think there's a little Rosario Dawson in there to kind of tie it into the Mandalorian version of Ahsoka. Uh, she's got the seamless arms. Seven hands, uh, some gripping hands, fists. Uh, there's a hand to hold the hologram projector, which comes with three holograms, uh, Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Yoda. There's a thermal detonator. Uh, she comes with a pretty basic stand, the sort of Death Star floor stand with a waist grabber. The cloak has a wired uh, bottom to it. Two lightsabers, the long and short lightsaber, and the two swinging effects. Now, that larger swinging effect I found is uh, kind of problematic with her small wrists in holding that up, but uh, that's really the only problem I found. Pretty decent amount of accessories uh, for a standard figure, and the purrs kind of puts it over the top for the price. Uh, pretty nice, something you don't find out outside of uh, DXs. Um, so... She does have seamless arms, and these uh, they look great. Uh, they match the skin on the face perfectly. Um, they did a great job there. They look great. Um, they work great. They'll give you really good range of motion. I would say wash your hands before uh, really touching them because they tend to pick up dirt uh, really easily. So definitely wash your hands, especially on uh, the Leku, anything white, anything light colored uh, like this. If you've got any kind of grease or oils on your hand, even maybe wear gloves. I'm not wearing gloves now, but uh, maybe even even do that. Or try not to touch the, the, the skin part of it too much. Uh, but you'll get about that much of a bend on that, which is pretty good. But you don't want to leave it in this position. Um, I've had this holding up uh, the hologram for a few days now and you can see that there is already a little bit of wrinkling uh, right there on the arm and uh, it's not bad it, it'll it'll work itself out it'll go back but if you leave something on the shelf too long in an extreme position with these um, seamless arms uh, then you, you're going to get some, some wrinkles and some creases and stuff in there. So just, just a word of warning. You can do what you want, but uh, I would say try to keep the bending to a minimum. Um, so that's that. Uh, hand movement is pretty good. She's got uh, the wrist standard pegs here. Um, and it's not really restricted all that much. It's pretty good. Uh, I don't know if this is actually, actually that's coming off. So uh, it's a little bit restricted backwards because of the uh, armor on her hand, but not too bad, not too bad at all. Um, that's good. Shoulder movement is um, also really good. Uh, she can get about a 90 degree before it starts pushing it down. So that's a pretty good 
range of motion. It, uh, it's on the body itself as a separate piece, I believe. So it should go all the way around. I'm not going to push it, though. I'm not going to try it. it. You should have 360 degree uh, movement, but uh, if you don't need to do that, I wouldn't push it because it's just more wear and tear on those. Check arms. out the outfit. The outfit's kind of made of a kind of a soft vinyl material. Um, these two pieces, the side pieces, are, are rigid plastic. I wouldn't push those too far, and they are kind of held in place. Um, I think this this top part is glued down. They'll move a little bit, give you a little bit of waist movement. Um, but you know, you're not going to probably get too far, um, with those. The legs themselves, uh, can go up pretty high. Again, you don't want to really mess with this vinyl material too much, so I wouldn't keep it in any kind of extreme position again. Um, uh, but she does get some pretty good range of movement on the legs. Double jointed knees go up to about, about there. Uh, only hindered by probably the boot part right there. While we're down on the uh, leg area, take a look at the ankles. Uh, this is a separate piece, so you can get movement. Uh, the boot might be one piece underneath there, but it's a leather boot, so uh, not that big a deal. It'll, it'll, it'll flex, so you get some good side-to-side uh, -side motion. Uh, down motion... Up's a little bit restricted because of the two, the gauntlet, the top of the boot, the armor part, but pretty good overall. The Leku, again, keep your hands clean, are flexible. Um, they'll move and hold their position. Um, it doesn't go all the way down to the, the tip of it, so you can kind of get a little bit of a curve in there if you want. Um, but that's great that the, I don't know what this tail part is called, but this has a little bit of a bend to it too. There is a wire in there, it feels like, but it doesn't do too much. Uh, it doesn't probably bend much more than that and hold its position. So if you, if you need that, it's there. Um, for the purrs, um, you remove, it's really nicely, seamlessly done. If you look at the head, it's really hard to tell where that this, this comes apart. There's no gap. It looks really nice. This top uh, sort of crown piece hides the seam really, really well. Um, but to do this, you remove that, pop that out like that. There is a little magnet there that, that meets the magnet on the top there, but you don't even really need that. I don't think that really does much. It's the the strength of the joint holds it in place. Um, and then you have this little tool that comes with any uh, hot toy that comes with purrs, and that just goes right into those two little uh, little sockets that allow you to then move the eyes left and right, up and down. Now the one thing I wish they did do was give you uh, two prongs on these things so that you could put it in and move the eyes simultaneously, uh, the same direction, because unless, unless you want the character cross-eyed, there's no reason to um, do them separately, really. You, you kind of want to do them together, and sometimes you have to keep adjusting it to make sure that they are sort of the same and not off. Uh, but that's as easy as that. So you can adjust your eyes the way you want, and then you just pop that back in. And there's a ball joint on the bottom of the head that's in the Leku uh, part, and that just pops into, this is also flexible rubber with a solid piece inside to hold the head. Overall, she's, she looks great. She moves really well. The purrs is fantastic. Um, just the Leku having the, uh, the, the wire, the bendy wire in it is fantastic. It's a really nice inclusion that they probably didn't need to do, but I'm glad they did.
I got this set up. Let's take a look, quick look at uh, the lighting setup. I'll walk you through what I got going on here. So I've got two loom cubes here. Uh, there's one just to the top here, right here. And there's one here. And behind there, everything is a RGB uh, Wii light uh, that's, that's set up uh, as to have like a blue tint to it. Key light is this loom cube right here. Um, it is not aimed directly at Ahsoka. It's bouncing off uh, a card, a white card that also has a blue uh, gel, cellophane gel uh, clip to it. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is I wanted to get, I just didn't want a harsh white. I didn't want a white glow, not even harsh. Um, I didn't, didn't want a white glow. I wanted, I wanted to keep this blue feeling to kind of contrast with her, the, the orange of her skin. Those are complementary colors on the, on the color wheel. And I wanted everything kind of to, else to recede in to the image aside from her, her sort of head. I mean, the Leku are very bright her face and Anakin and just have that be the focus of the shot. Just, you're just looking at her uh, intensely looking at this message from, from Anakin telling them whatever. Um, the reason I'm not shining this light directly onto Ahsoka is um, I want to, I want to soften that light. I don't want a harsh light on her either. So um, trying to keep that very soft. I've got kind of a, um, Rembrandt lighting going on here. Rembrandt lighting, I'll show you some examples of that here. Uh, it's lighting one side of the face uh, predominantly, uh, where on the other side of the face, you've got a triangle. It creates a triangle. It just comes over the nose, the light, so that it creates a triangle underneath the eye, uh, kind of on the, the, the cheekbone uh, that goes down the nose and sort of sits at the top of the mouth. It's a triangle. You, you can see it in the pictures. I do have... <laughs> A bounce card over here. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, and this is just another white card on a clip. That's giving Rex just a little bit of a, a, a side light to him, a little bit of a rim light to uh, just to define his face a little bit. I just didn't want him to just you know to completely recede into darkness. The second light is this light right here, which is another loom cube. This does have a blue gel in it. Um, and, uh, what that's doing is almost exclusively just lighting up this, this, uh, hologram. So I'm, I've t even taped off, this has got a barn door on it too. And I've even taped off just the bottom of the barn door. You can kind of see just the amount of light that's coming through there. That's it. That's the height of it. That's the width of it. And it's just coming through just enough to sort of light uh, the Anakin hologram. In the back is uh, the, the Wii light. That's going to create kind of a glow, almost a, a rim light around everybody. It's backlighting, so it, there's going to be a little bit of a glow around everybody. You can see it on, on Rex's face right here. And you can see it on the side of the, the clone trooper right there. And on Ahsoka, it will kind of light up around the edges of her... Uh, cloak and probably you know some of the, the areas of her leku um, and it's also going to give a basis for the fog when it comes in there um, to sort of just light up you know give this ethereal feel to it you know this the, the fog swimming around and sort of lit up from behind it's not going to be too much i'm not going to use too much fog i'm going to keep that to kind of a minimum i just want a little bit of atmosphere I don't want to obscure this background, which is a generic sci-fi uh, diorama, just wall. And that is pretty much it. That's the setup. We're going to start putting some fog on this thing and uh, start shooting it. So um, let's get to it.
All right, so what do I think of Ahsoka Tano? Um, I think it's a really good figure. I really like the purrs. I think that the bendy wire and the leku is uh, a great touch. Uh, overall, just a really good figure. I had an issue with the hand pegs being a little loose. I don't know if that's just my figure. She really couldn't hold up the lightsaber effects too well. But other than that, I really like it. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 6. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it or learned something. If you did, hit that like button. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, keep shooting your toys.